Welcome back, ladies and gents. On today's show, Chevy shows off its new Indy Pace car. BMW builds a wagon we've all been dreaming about, and Jeep's ready to go off the grid with its new Moab concept. Plus, we look at the five weirdest engines ever made. I'm Tiffany Stone, and this is Haggerty's Daily Driver. Let's buckle up. First up, what do Guy Fieri, Lance Armstrong, and General Colin Powell all have in common? Well, they've all paced the field at the Indianapolis 500 in a Corvette. With its longtime commitment to Indy, most modern pace cars have been Corvettes, and this year is no different. Now, Chevy just rolled out photos of its new pace car, and to no one's surprise, it's a gorgeous torch red C8. But this is not just any C8. This one gets a Z51 performance package. You're gonna get a high wing spoiler, carbon flash exterior accents, GT2 bucket seats, and a custom Indy 500 paint job. Now this will be the 17th time a Corvette has paced the field and the C8 will be driven by none other than GM president Mark Royce. He's a huge motorsport supporter and serious car guy. Just stay out of the frunk, Mark. Of course, because of COVID-19, there won't be any fans when the race finally runs on Sunday, August 23rd. But it'll make it just that much easier to hear the C8's glorious V8. Do you have a favorite Indy 500 pace car? If you do, let us know in the comments. Oh my God. Do you guys hear that? What is it? It, it literally sounds like the heaven gates are opening and angels are singing. Oh, wow. oh my gosh. Yes. You wanna know why, guys? Because BMW is finally building an M3 wagon. Now, BMW released this teaser photo yesterday and said they will begin development testing of a five-door M3. You guys, this is huge. In the entire M3 lineage, there has only been one wagon, and it was a prototype based on the E46 chassis. But they never produced it. And we're not sure why, because Audi and Mercedes have sold wagon versions of their M3 competitors for years. However, there's no specs out yet, but it's safe to assume that the estate will have the same twin turbo six as the regular M3. But they're not going to sell it here, and I can't blame them. They stopped selling the normal three series wagon here, and neither Audi or Mercedes offer wagons in this segment to the US. And finally, my favorite subject. A new Jeep. In the past, Jeep has shown off its Wrangler-based concepts at the Easter Jeep Safari. That event was canceled this year for obvious reasons, but Jeep isn't letting that get in the way of its concept cars. Now, Jeep announced they're going to build this, a Jeep Gladiator Far Out. This Far Out concept was encouraged by the popularity of a 2019 concept called The Way Out. I know, I know, it's confusing, but a Jeep Overlander is a good thing, trust me. The Far Out will have Jeep's 3-liter diesel V6, giving it 260 horsepower and a stout 442 pound-feet of torque. It also comes with a 2-inch lift kit and 37-inch tires that will help you get away. And when you're there, the Far Out's rooftop tent and built-in fridge will make sure you're comfortable. Now, we don't know if it will ever go on sale, but all great cars started out as concepts, and overlanding is hotter than ever. I think the real question is, M3 wagon or Jeep far out? I know my answer, what's yours? Let us know down below. Coming up, five of the strangest engines that made it into production, but first. Haggerty's Kyle Smith wrote an article about the five strangest engines to ever make it to production. Now here's a few of them. First up, the Wankel, otherwise known as a rotary engine, is best known for powering the Mazda RX-7. Now what makes it so strange? It only has three moving parts, the two rotors and the output shaft. There's no pistons, no cams, no valves, no timing belts, none of that. It's crazy to think about, but if you wanted to make more power, it's kind of like a Lego set. All you have to do is bolt the rotors together and boom, more power. Now Mazda used this technology in a lot of its cars. From the 1967 Mazda Cosmo Sport 110S to the famous FDRX7 of the 90s. Next up, Chrysler's turbine engine. 
What a crazy experiment that was. To me, it seems like it was a result of like a drunk evening with a hot rodder and you had a spare airplane and Chrysler was like, let's build this turbine car. The engineers thought it was a great idea because a turbine has fewer parts than a normal engine, so less parts and maintenance. But it was super expensive to build and it only made 130 horsepower, so it wouldn't give potential shoppers that wow factor of a V8, so they ended up shelving it. But we're not done yet. Our Haggerty community members had even more gems. For example, Panamericano brought up the BRM H16, an F1 engine with six opposed cylinders. You guys, that's like four Subaru engines bolted together. It also needed four sets of headers. Just look at how big it is inside of that Lotus. Now to see the full list of strange engines and the comments, head over to community.haggerty.com or hit the link below. Now that's all for this week, but I'll be back next week with more car news. Until then, keep driving. Done this week. And we're done this this week. <laughs> I'm not good at throwing